Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Thank you so much for joining me tonight for the preaching experience. But I have something very special for you. My father, Dr. Gardner Calvin Taylor, has been hailed and celebrated as one of the greatest preachers in the history of the Christian church. Actually, he was born right here in the state of Louisiana to a remarkable preacher, Washington Monroe Taylor. He pastored here in the city of New Orleans, then his father's church, the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Baton Rouge before going to the Concord Baptist Church in Brooklyn in 1948, where he spent 42 years. Under his ministry, the church grew to more than 14,000 members with the creation of a number of ministries that not only served that congregation, but also the larger community. His marvelous, excellent, poetic eloquence made his preaching welcomed all over the world. In 1961, my father challenged Dr. Joseph Harrison Jackson, the then president of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. As a result of that election and its outcome, there was a division in the Baptist church and my father became a part of another Baptist convention. But in the year 2000, Dr. William J. Shaw, the then president of the National Baptist Convention, invited Dr. Taylor back to preach. And this message is not only a powerful word, it is a historical moment. So let us now hear Dr. Taylor preaching to the National Baptist Convention in the year 2000, a message titled, A Theology of Three Trees. Let's hear now, my dad. Dr. Taylor. I had not thought of the element of history that might be involved when Dr. Gardner Calvin Taylor was invited to preach here this afternoon. But it struck me later that this is a very historic moment. I think that um, those of you who have memories of the 60s uh, will recall that um, crisis developed uh, in the National Convention, not essentially over biblical theology, but over the convention's involvement uh, in the critical issues of our time uh, and how we would be structured to deal with it. And the division took place. On one side was Jace Jackson. On the other side, symbolizing another thrust, was Gardner Calvin Taylor. There was a division uh, within the Baptist witness that, to my mind, in many ways, uh, has been a tragic division. Uh, 
but God works things out in his own way. But at the second occasion of our celebrating this uh, Jace Jackson C.A.W. Clark preaching forum, to have Gardner Taylor uh, as preacher uh, is a very special moment. Dr. Taylor needs no introduction by way of background as to what he's done and all that kind of thing. Uh, he's recognized as uh, the dean of preachers uh, by so many within and without our own faith tradition. Uh, and he consented to come and share with us this afternoon. And I'm delighted that he has come. It is with great pleasure, then, uh, that I present uh, to this body, the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated, uh, the preacher, Gardner C. Taylor. I agree with you. My brothers and sisters, yeah. when you stood, and you were very gracious, I said to myself, you will stand for anything. <laughs> but on second thought, well, you will stand for nothing. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, Many inexpressible and irrepressible emotions yes, surge through my being all right, all right. at this moment. Many memories yes, come flooding back. Yes, and I salute you, Mr. President, for the generosity of your spirit and for the breadth of your soul yes, sir. All right, all right. in inviting me here today. Yes, sir. Some people might say for your recklessness. <laughs> because there are those who were among whom I was looked, or I am, looked upon as a heresy on I wanted to tell the truth without too many people understanding it. Sorry. <laughs> but Mr. President, I, uh, I do indeed salute the breath of your spirit. Yes, sir. In bidding me come, and I come happy. Yes, sir. All right. All right. And with a great sense of honor. Yeah. If you will look in your minutes, you do not have no course now, but for 1943, yeah. it will be found that I preached in this convention That's right. yeah. on Wednesday evening All right. at the 35th Regiment Armory in Chicago. Yeah. I was 25 years old. There about. <laughs> and scared to death. Oh, Here I am nearly 60 years later. Nearly scared to death. Oh, all right, all right. Yes, that has been my experience all through these years. Well, it's an occupational hazard. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm no less afflicted with it today than I ever was. But coming here to Minneapolis reminds me of something else. In 1949, my late wife and I drove from New York across country to the session of this convention in Los Angeles. We got to the outskirts of Minneapolis. 
called on the telephone at the Hotel Minnesota. No longer exists, but I checked with the librarian this morning, your librarian here. It was built in 1927. All right. I was, and we asked for a room. Yeah. All right, sir. We were told, come right down. We were on outskirts of town. Talk to when yeah. We drove in, and the clerk at the desk told us that must have been some mistake. Yeah. <laughs> My late wife said, well, we will sit here in the lobby, and you may find a room. We sat there five minutes, and the clerk came back and said, we found a room. They did not want us sitting in the lobby. <laughs> may still live and may remember this. If not, he may look up. <laughs> and the call. Yeah. I preached here then because of the intervention of Russell Barber, Senator to your National Baptist Voice. I need friend Marshall Shepard. In fact, everywhere I've been, I've almost just been because somebody has opened the way for me to be. All right. That, the World Alliance, the first time in Cleveland, 1950, the City Auditorium, Sunday morning, Doug H. Judgeman, Mount Carmel Church, made it possible. Yeah. All right. President Clinton's inauguration, Gordon Jordan, made it Christmas. Always has been somebody else. Yes, right. Who has opened the way for me. Yes, and I, I would never claim to be a self-made man. In fact, yeah. I think, and we used to use that term widely, a self-made man would be terrible to look at. No, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We do poorly enough when two people have been. <laughs> President, my brothers and sisters, in early April of this year, I wrote to the distinguished president of this convention, Dr. Shaw, and to my great and good friend, Dr. Ed Jones, in the town, Secretary Harry Wright, president of the National Baptist Convention of America, my own president of the Progressive National Baptist Convention, Dr. Daniels and said in each of them this, that in 1950, our black Baptist witness in this country had a great fissure. Right, yeah. My father was involved. In Chicago. In 1961, we came to a great division. Yeah. I happened to be involved. Yeah. When I said this to my, and I do think you did, when I said this to this lady of mine, who of sparkling intelligence but of cutting wit about this, she said, your father was in the first division. I said, yes. <laughs> and you were in the second division. I said, yes. She said, well, we may be glad you don't have a son. <laughs> Here we sit in our several rooms. All right, now. This grand and spacious assembly of the National Baptist Convention on the leadership of Dr. William Shaw, National Baptist Convention of America, on the leadership of my great friend Ed Jones, the leadership and membership of the Progressive Convention under Mac and Daniel, all in the same household, but in separate rooms. I may not be able to see it. That the middle wall needs to be torn down.
The name in their own judgment, the Methodists call that in their discipline, in their godliness about their bishops. The name of commission of return and reunion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tremendous witness we could make to America yes, as a united Baptist people. Yes, and let me say this: we could invite our also separated white brethren. Yeah. 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 We might together yeah. address this nation. Yeah. But more important, All right. more important. We would fulfill the prayer that our Lord made yep, yep, yep. his father. Yeah. Yeah. He turned from it, from us, yeah. toward the throne. Yeah. I pray, he said, that they might be one. 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 Yeah. That the world might believe yeah. that thou hast sent me. Yeah. It is no less an issue than that. Now there will be those very likely in all of our country be opposed to that because there are always people who stand with one foot in the present and one foot in the past. Yes. But yes. they never herald the future. No, yes. I pray to God that that day will come within my lifetime. Yes. But even beyond, and that would not have to be too long a time at that. Yes. I'm very grateful for what you have said, Reverend Bacchus, about the books that have been produced in my name. Five volumes, six to come. Yeah. I remember this convention to really compile that material. Ed Taylor. You know yeah. 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 I did not know that material from the National Broadcasting Company in 1959 still existed. You own it. He found it all. I am grateful to him. I'm grateful to Judson Press. Right. He tells me that I am to go along with. Dr. and Mrs. Henry Mitchell, no, I can't say Dr. and Mrs. Henry Mitchell, Dr. Henry Mitchell and Dr. Ellen Mitchell, yeah, right. to do a book signing. I, I, whatever you say, I have to say, so I, I put myself in neutral <laughs> and go where I'm pushed. All right. <laughs> yourself in neutral. Go where you push. You strip no gears. And you use up no fuel. This hour, uh, right. such a telling way, and I'm grateful to this young pastor who spoke today as he spoke. Yes, sir. I, I and those few who are of my generation need to realize two things. First, that the Lord is not without a witness beyond our time. Yes. Yes. That's right. And number two, that we need to get on out of the way. Yes. It seems singularly appropriate to me that you would designate this hour for two icons All right. yeah. of the preaching undertaking. J.H. Yes, yeah. yeah. Jackson, yeah. C.A.W. Clark. Yeah. It is no secret that Dr. Jackson and I differed on public policy, yes. but we never lost our appreciation for each other. Yeah. Right. Right. For me, in the Concord Church, in the last years of his life, I preached yep. for him in the Olivet Church. That's right. In my office, we sat together and ate Snickers. 
He once said to me that he was not born with a weak voice like some of you pastors are, are blessed with. But he had to, I never forgot the word. He said he had to husband his voice carefully. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my. And how carefully and nobly he did. Oh, yes, he did. Yeah. And with that, God had put in his throat a dozen Stradivarius violins. Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. All right. And a group of silver trumpets. Yes. Yes. With the violins, he could comfort and console. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And with the trumpet, he could arouse and alert and alarm. Oh. Yeah. Martin King, who was my friend, used to say to me, and others I'm sure, oh, yeah. that he and Dr. Jackson differed on many things. Yeah. But he could not stand to hear James Jackson preach. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All, right, All of their differences, he said, melted away. Yeah. <laughs> and had that marvelous gift. All right. God bless his memory. Yeah. She's a clock and I came along together. Well, here in North Louisiana, I in South Louisiana. I will not tell you the street he lived on in Shreveport. Yeah. But I hope he will sometimes tell you. Well, I will tell you. All right. <laughs> it, uh, it had nothing to do with who he, who he is. All right. In fact, somebody was talking here about oxymoron. There never was a greater oxymoron in existence than the name of that street and Caesar Club. Right. It was 1900 Looney Street. <laughs> he has had uh, many those who have sought to imitate his preaching. Yes, sir. But when they have got the music right, they got the lyrics wrong. <laughs> and when they straightened out the lyrics, the, the rhythm went on. <laughs> he is sui generis. Yeah. One of a kind. Yes, sir. I'm happy I have in my library a book. James Stewart, who was a marvelous Scottish preacher whom I knew yes, in his last years. Faith to proclaim. And in it, I looked at it the other day, to my lifelong friend, Gardner Taylor, signed Caesar Clark. Yeah. yeah. I have perhaps lingered too long now in this snow car. We are called on to do business here in Great Waters. So let us weigh anchor. Set sail. Go on to the high seas and hope for fair haven harbor. I had one. I had one. Uses a subject today, three trees to glory. Yeah. And then I thought of another subject, the preachers, three preaching trees. Yeah. I had lunch the other day with Dr. William Jones, asked of my crowd in New York, marvelous preacher. Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, he said, I mentioned what I wanted to try to deal with. He said you ought to call that. The theology of three trees. Yeah. Right. I said that's a little too pretentious for me. <laughs> but I give out all of those so you can take your choice. <laughs> there, there is a certain, Dr. Epps, there is a certain self-protectiveness in there. You will never be able to say that I didn't stay with the subject because you don't know what the subject was. But yeah, at the beginning of as a ravishing vision, 
glad musical thunder of that final book of the Bible comes to its conclusion. Yeah. At the very last chapter, the long chronicle of Scripture comes to its end. At the first verse, the first two verses, and the part of the third. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Then at the beginning of that next verse it says, And there shall be no more curse. Let me start with that. Curse? Curse, did you say? Yeah. How did it get here? Well, oh. it get <laughs> we must go to Eden to find out. <laughs> must have been an ineffably beautiful place. Yeah. Yeah. In its azure blue sky, no cloud frown. What you say? Golden grain waved at the gentle breeze. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eden must have been an ineffably yeah. beautiful place. Yeah. Yeah. Its four-headed river ran through the garden, imparting air and moisture to its verdant fields. All right. From its trees hung luscious fruit, the leaves themselves almost nimbly dancing in the general zephyrs, which blew through the garden. Must have been an ineffably beautiful place. No winter's chill breathed its frigid air on the calmness of that perfect place. Yes, Eden must have been an ineffably beautiful place. There was one trouble. There was a serpent in that garden. That's right. Who approached the tenants. Yes, sir. Not owners. Tenants. Jesus! But the tenants. God share crop. The serpent did not make a direct frontal attack upon God because not even Satan yes, sir. would go that far. <laughs> but he approached from the flanks. Did God say? Did he say to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you should not eat of a certain tree? Uh, he knows. That you will have the knowledge of good and evil. Yes. Now, a Christian theology under the impetus of Augustine, tired and worn out with his excesses in the hovels of North Africa, followed by a frigid sexuality in England, asserted that the sin in Eden's garden was that of sex. I, I do not believe it. Yeah. All right. I have always believed that it was the temptation of man, the highest of God's creation, to be more than creature. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And when judgment was rendered, yeah. it was said they, should, they would be as gods. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. All that is noble, That's what it notable, at the height of God's people wanting to be more. Yeah. And I take that to be the root of all of our prejudice yes, sir. and bigotry. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Taylor and my driver were talking coming to the airport about the divisions in the world. Not just north and south, not just black and white. Northern Europeans looking down on Southern Europeans. Yeah. Jew and Palestinian. Yeah. Wherever man finds yeah. yeah. there is this attempt to be more than somebody else. Yeah. That was a sin. Milton put it well in his Paradise Lost. He spoke of that forbidden tree whose moral taste brought death and all its ills in the world, brought death into the world and all its ills, all its ills, and we face them still. Our nation and the world today, our nation particularly, is being plagued by, I heard that the Surgeon General spoke of it last night, by the plague of AIDS. Bob Herbert, writing in the New York Times himself, a person of color, a columnist. And I hope his speakers are wrong. He got them from the Joint Committee, the Joint Commission on Disease Control. He said that, I hesitate even to repeat them, that one, one out of every 50 young black Americans between the ages of 25 and 45 are infected with the virus that produces AIDS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One out of every 150 young black women. Mm. I touched upon this in United Seminary where Dr. Franklin Richardson is an honored office bearer and faculty member, but let me go at it a little more today. 17 million lives have been lost in Africa. You ought to die. Yeah. And I do not have the answer, but preachers, Sunday school teachers, you're going to have to deal with this. Yes. We are talking about the extinction of a race. Yes. And, it, and it is a difficulty, I admit, I know. I know that I face it myself. I know that we are taught to preach thou shalt not. That ought to preach. But the same told us to preach thou shalt not wrote into the gene genetic code yeah, yeah. of our humanity provisions that the human race will not perish. You got it. Mm -hmm. I do not want to go at that too directly, but that genetic code complements us or imposes upon us certain drives. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Desires. Yeah. Urges. And somewhere between thou shalt not and the recognition of these awful drives in the human spirit, we're going to have to shape the teaching of our young people. I do not want today, I do not want to touch upon public affairs, but I cannot help saying to you that in that all of the talk about this faith based money. My brothers, be careful. And I'm not fool enough to tell you not to take that money. My mother didn't, break, didn't raise no simple. But before you take it, you get yourself, if you can find one, an honest account. I heard the other day of a gangster leader an accountant, he said to him, said, can you, can you count? The accountant said, oh yes, I went to Syracuse University. He said, how much is two plus two? The accountant said, how much you want it to be? <laughs> Find yourself an honest accountant. Because preacher, I say this advisedly and deliberately. You are the only, practically only the, the only free voice 
left in America. Do not look to the political aspect, no matter how they are honored, written about. We saw a scam pulled before all of America with the promise of a bribe, a bribe of $600. Three hundred, and not content with the bribe, the election was then hijacked. Yes. Do not look in that direction. Industry, communications, all of these people are under the the greed. You preachers are the only free voices in America, and your people have made you free. Speak truth. To power. Yes, sir. Do not ever let yourself get compromised. Yes. And so that first year. Yes. But how to get out of that curse? Yes. How to redress this awful evil? Yes. So Peter yes. says, speaking in the fifth chapter of the book of Acts, he says, God raised up Jesus. Whom you slew on a tree. Yeah. 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 So we come to the second tree. Yeah. Our Lord Christ, in an act of self of self offering and self denial and consecration in the wilderness, hungry was approached by that same figure, yeah. dressed differently perhaps, but yeah. the same figure, yeah. who showed up in Eden's garden. Yeah. Yeah. What did you say? And that figure was saying to him, hurry, you don't have time. Yeah. Hurry, move quickly. Yeah. Look at these stones. Yeah. Yeah. Turn them into bread. Quickly, quickly now. Yeah. You can't wait. Sorry. Health and wealth. Yeah. Uh. Name it and claim it. Yeah. 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 Television peddlers. Yeah. Of a cheap counterfeit of the Christian God. Yeah. 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 Only enough sprinkling of scripture in it to receive. An undiscerning public turn these stones. Right. Yes. said, not so. Yes. Yes. If not that, then let us go up to the pinnacle of the temple, he said. If you want to really attract this crowd, yeah. get them with you. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Hurry, hurry. hurry man. No time. No, said the Lord Christ. Lord, yeah. right. And then he showed him the kingdoms of this world. Yeah. Yeah. And made a bogus claim that he had title to it. Bogus claim. Said, I'll give it all to you. Yeah. Not so. And our Lord took another way that led to a tree. Yes. Yeah. Another way. On Golgotha. Yeah. Yes. Another tree. And see, oh, he hung there between a soaring heaven and a sinning earth. Yeah. And died yeah. until death died. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You can almost hear over the ringing of the hammer on the nails hey. a strange cry issuing up there out of that darkness. My God, Father, forgive them. Yeah. Yeah. Those words were uttered to the sound of the ringing of the hammers yeah, yeah. as he drove the nails, the spikes through his innocent flesh. Yeah. That was the only way. Yeah. The heavens would not watch it. Yeah. Yeah. No. And so pulled the shades of darkness. Yeah. Oh, the face of me. Sometimes it causes me to tremble. But he stayed 
anything. Yeah. On that tree yeah. until it all was paid. Yes. Until the old account was settled. Yes. Until the one that was brought back home. Until the exile was restored to citizenship. Yeah. Yeah. Until the orphan became again a child of the father's house. Yeah. Stay in there. And we 
Words are too inadequate now. Thanks be to God. What a joy it was to bring you this message on Father's Day, which also happens to be the birthday of my father, June 18th. But let me tell you what's really important. After hearing that word, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've never invited him into your life, or if you're not certain that you are a believer, repeat these life-changing words after me. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in my heart he rose from the dead. And now by faith and according to your word, I receive the gift of salvation, the forgiveness of sins, and ever lasting life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Welcome to life. If you'd like to join our church, do so virtually. And we're working out a plan that wherever you are in the nation, you can be a part of the Life Center Cathedral here in the city of New Orleans. And until we get together again, I want you, yes, you, to enjoy life. The Lord be with you.